guys, John from flyatmikealpha.com and today we're going to be talking about special use airspace, especially important to know if you're going on a private pilot checkride or a commercial pilot checkride and definitely at the CFI level you need to know this stuff. So, we'll start off with just the basic airspace we see around our own airport around here in Venice. We've got the US ADIS that's depicted about 12 miles offshore or so, the Air Defense Intercept Zone, and that basically depicts the international border uh, between the United States and uh, international airspace. If we're going to cross the ADIS, we need to be on a DVFR flight plan or an IFR flight plan certainly need a transponder and there's a couple other things your aircraft may require like um, appropriately sized end numbers and things like that so also if you're going to be crossing that go ahead and brush up on your um, interception procedures just in case you make a mistake and you do make friends with a uh, military jet or something that intercepts you looking over here to the east we'll find an MOA this MOA is a military operations area it's not required that you uh, contact anyone to go through it, but it may be hazardous for you to go through it because there could be some really fast moving jets. There are times that the MOAs are in use and we can find those times on the side panel of the sectional chart. We can go down to the side here and it'll tell us MOA, the name, the altitude that's valid from, and the times of use, the controlling center. We could always contact um, the controlling agency uh, Miami Center in this case to find out if it is in fact hot or cold at that time safe to go through. Restricted areas are areas that again have operating times and you're going to want to always call air traffic control and make sure that the area is cold that you can proceed through it and be in contact with them when you're going through that area. Um, it's one of those things where you can go through it but you need to talk to ATC first to really just double check that it is in fact cold. Another MOA there, same rules apply to all MOAs. We'll go ahead and look a little farther south here and we'll find an alert area. Alert area is a concentrated area of flight training. Um, basically just be aware that there's lots of flight training going on in this area. No controlling agencies uh, that pertain to alert areas because no one's controlling all those crazy student pilots out there. It's just an alert to you that that's where a lot of student pilots go to practice. So the next level of airspace we're gonna go ahead and find here is prohibited airspace. So what we wanna do is find an area that has a P next to it. It looks a lot like restricted airspace, but instead it's going to be prohibited and prohibited is just that it's prohibited for you to ever go through it. So for example, we have P-50 here, that's prohibited airspace right over the Naval Air Station up there, or actually, I'm sorry, uh, Naval Submarine Base up there. And uh, you just flat out can't go through it, ever. Uh, don't go near it, don't try to go through it. Um, obviously, if you have an emergency, you could go through prohibited airspace. Some other examples of prohibited airspace would be like uh, Camp David, things like that where they don't want you flying near it. So, um, next thing that we could talk about might be a warning area, and we'll find warning areas off the coast. Just um, usually right off the coast of Florida, we'll always find them, especially near naval air bases where they have high-speed military traffic, um, very similar to a uh, MOA where uh, you're going to have high-speed traffic. Here it even has a little warning, high-density military traffic passing through the area. And it may be hazardous to non-participating aircraft. And uh, just be aware, try to avoid them if you can. Down here we have this gray area, and that's something that's kind of new. That's a military operations area or military activity area. And typically why they gray that out there, that's going to be for um, a lot of UAS activity for the military, drones flying around or other high-speed military jet traffic. And um, you can even see right here, they put a little box on the sectional chart. Um, contact Gainesville Radio on 122.2 for activity status of what kind of military activity is going on in the area. So you can be aware before flying through this area. Other um, special use airspaces would be CFAs, controlled firing areas, and those we're not going to find anywhere on the chart. They're not depicted on charts. So the controlled firing area is where they're going to be um, firing off artillery or something like that, and they have spotters around, and they're looking for other aircraft, and they're supposed to stop when they see other aircraft approaching. So it really is not supposed to pose any hazard to us, um, but they don't 
really have any sort of controlling agency or they're not depicted on the charts. We don't even know where they're at. We just know they're out there and they should stop shooting when they see us get nearby. Here we notice this funny little blue ring and it's all around the Washington DC area. This little white background blue ring and that depicts a CIFRA, Special Flight Rules Area. And for CIFRAs, you actually have to take a special online course before you go fly through them. And it's exactly just that. The Washington DC Metropolitan Area CIFRA, Special Flight Rules Area. There's special rules about flying around their VFR. So it's different for New York or for Washington DC and so on. You wanna go ahead and take the course. You can take it through AOPA or the Air Safety Institute to um, brush up on that. And you actually are required to take that course. It depends on the CIFRA, but I think about 30 days or so um, within 30 days of flying into that area. So the last one we're going to talk about now is NSAs, National Security Areas, and I'm going to have to try to look here and find one. So here's what a National Security Area might look like around this power plant or something with these magenta dash lines, and it says, notice for reasons of national security, pilots are requested to avoid flight at and below 8,000 feet in this area. And they may, under certain circumstances, make this a prohibited area, and that would be posted in some sort of NOTAM, so make sure you always get your flight briefing from flight service before you go flying, so you know if you're gonna be flying around one of these areas, or better yet, they're fairly small, avoid them altogether. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching, and thank you so much for sharing us on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other social media sites. If you have any questions about the video at all, just leave them in the comments below, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Be sure to give us a thumbs up on our video, and you can subscribe to us to keep up with all our latest episodes right over here on the right. Also, check out some of these other helpful videos below, and remember, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We'll see you all next time.